everyone, and welcome to the Wine Shop Talk. I'm your host, Sommelier Aaron Ozar, and I am so happy that you're here with me today. If we haven't met before, it's lovely to have you here, and if we have, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you my second grape in my six favorite grape series, and the grape we're going to be talking about today is Zinfandel. Now, when you think about your favorite red wines, Zinfandel may not be on that list, and today I want to share with you why potentially it's one of the most underused and maybe undervalued grape varieties that you maybe don't even have in your wine rack, and I'm going to share why it is always on my wine rack. If you're ready to learn more about Zinfandel and learn about some of my favorite pairings and how it can also become one of the most valued grape varieties in your wine rack, stay tuned. We're going to dive right into it all in today's episode. Let's get started. Okay, so last week we talked about Moscato de Asti and why I love that grape and I truly feel that you should as well and why it is so versatile and delicious and it's just one of those great varieties that's always in my house. So if you missed that episode, you're definitely going to want to listen in on that one. Now we're talking about the second of my six favorite grape varieties. So let's get started learning about Zinfandel by going back to the beginning, if you will, of where it originated from. You may have heard that Zinfandel originated from Puglia, which is that sexy stiletto boot part of Italy. And while we grow it there and it does very well there, after more research, we found out that actually Zinfandel is a grape variety originated in Croatia. So it is also grown there as well. Now, where does Zinfandel love to live? Where does it do really well? It's grown in California and predominantly in Puglia. Now in Puglia, we call it Primitivo. So if you are shopping in the Italian wine aisle, or if you've had a Primitivo before, you are enjoying Zinfandel from Italy. Now in Italy, it's not uncommon for it to be blended with a really big grape variety called Negro Amaro. So it may be a blend, but we also do single varieties. Now, if we come back to California, Zinfandel accounts for almost 10% of California red grape variety growth, which is a lot when you think about the amount of wine that's grown in California. It's predominantly in the northern and central coast areas, with Lodi considered to be one of the top key areas. And I have some food pairing ideas for you as well. When you think about your favorite red grape varieties, Probably many of you are thinking about Merlot, Cabernet, Malbec, maybe red blends like Grenache, Muved, and Syrah, the Holy Trinity from the south of France, Pinot Noir, as much as that's a medium grape, but Pinot will come in, and trust me, we'll be talking about Pinot in a different episode. Shiraz, Syrah, for sure as well. But maybe Zinfandel doesn't make your list, and I really want to talk to you about why it should be on your favorite red list, as well as why it's a great variety I always keep in the house. It is so versatile. So let's talk a little bit about how Zinfandel grows. So Zinfandel, when you think about Cabernet and Merlot, Zinfandel doesn't have as thick of skin. So as much as we get lots of color out of Zinfandel, its skin itself is not as thick as Cabernet and Malbec and Merlot. And so it is susceptible to rot, which means when we grow it, we need to make sure there's good airflow in those vines so the leaves can act as shading, but they can also act as a way to keep moisture in a grapevine. So when we're growing things in the field, we want to make sure we're using vine training techniques to keep that airflow going because we don't want moisture in between those grape varieties, which can cause fungus. So when we're training Zinfandel, training meaning how we grow it on those wires in the vineyard, we want to make sure that we're giving it lots of airflow. The other thing about Zinfandel is, well, it loves warm days. It loves the heat in the daytime. It doesn't want a lot of really strong high heat. And Zinfandel actually can burn in the field. And it's not uncommon when people are doing a tasting and talk, talking about the flavors and the aromas that they're getting off of Zinfandel for people to say that it has a bit of a burnt or a smoky flavor to it. And this can come from almost too much heat. The grapes can get a sunburn, if you will, and that smokiness can come through into the glass. The other important thing in regards to how we grow Zinfandel in the field is it really likes good drainage. You may have heard the phrase that grapevines don't like wet feet. This stands for all grapevines. We like really good drainage, but Zinfandel definitely needs that good drainage. Again, we don't want any moisture maintaining in that soil because then the humidity is going to come up underneath the vine and those leaves act like an umbrella and trap in that humidity. And again, we get into funguses. The other thing about Zinfandel is high alcohol. So Zinfandel is 
lots of sugar in that grape variety and the more sun we get the higher the alcohol goes. So Zinfandel generally falls between 14 to almost 17 percent alcohol so these are not lightweights in regards to alcohol levels and we really have to watch in regards to the winemakers carefully attending to how this is ripening. Zinfandel bunches also ripen unevenly which can be a bit tricky for a winemaker so you can see it's a little bit finicky in the field in that we really have to give it some love and attention but when it does have love and attention and it can produce wonderful medium to full-bodied reds, lots of deep colors, and lots of different fruit flavors. The other thing, because we have a lighter skin, so the skin is thinner, we don't have as many high tannins as when you think about Cabernet and Merlot and Malbec, those really big reds that most people will associate with a big strong red. We have softer tannins in Zinfandel. Now, we do have some really old vines in Vindel. So when we get into parts of California, we're talking about vines that are over 100 years old. Why is that important? When we talk about old vine wines, the big deal is that as the vine gets older, it produces less fruit, but it produces more concentrated fruit. So the older the vine is, the less fruit bunches it produces, but the more intense flavors it's going to give us. And when we get those, we get into some really complex, layered, aromatics and flavor profiles on the palate, so it's a big deal. On a side note, old vines as a category does not have any legal requirements globally. So when you see old vines on a label, it's important to do a little bit of homework. It could mean 20 years old, it could mean 50 years old, it could mean over 100 years old. So globally, we don't have a designation, if you will, that vineyards around the world have agreed to of what old vines mean. Now, let's go on to what can you expect in the glass. When Zinfandel is grown in a cooler climate where it has more cooler influences, we're going to get more of those red berry flavors. So more cherries, some raspberries, for example. And when we grow it with more heat, here's where we get those blackberries, plums, blueberries, really dark sweet fruits that way as well. You might hear that you'll also get a bit of raisin or fig or date flavors. I know for me, a lot of times on a glass of Zinfandel, I'll get a light hint of almost like a chocolate covered raisin. So you have those really rich raisin flavors and not in a bad way, just a bit of dried fruit, which again means that in the sun, that, that grape really, really ripened to a point that we're almost getting a dried fruit note. Zinfandel can have a very velvety, full-bodied mouthfeel. The other thing, because the tannins are low, a lot of people are going to find that they are really rich and mouth-watering almost in regards to how much fruit, to the point that you may hear it referred to as, this wine is jammy, is a word you're going to hear, or robust, people will also say. But generally, Zinfandel wines, while we'll have tannin as a backbone, the fruit is so strong that we don't have too much of that really mouth-drying sensation that isn't covered with a velvet fruit. So if you are somebody who really likes big red wines, but you're really careful in regards to how dry they feel, how much of that dryness you get from the tannins, Zinfandel is going to give you lots of rich velvet mouthfeel without those tannins that come in on the back. You'll feel them, but they're going to be wrapped in velvet. Now, the other important thing about Zinfandel, because it is rich in regards to medium to full body, now that we've talked a little bit about where it's grown, what you can expect in the glass, let's talk about how you're going to use it why this is a grape that I always keep in the house. And this is a 12 season grape for me in that there's not a month of the year that I probably won't open a bottle of Zinfandel at some point. And here's why. Zinfandel, because of those ripe sweet flavors that come through in the fruit and the lower tannins, not no tannins, lower tannins, make it ideal for anything that has a sauce to it, especially more of a sweeter style sauce. So if you like to grill, if you are a barbecue person or family like we are, then we'll use Zinfandel a lot because when we talk about barbecue sauces, and here's just a side note in regards to why barbecue sauce can be a danger item in regards to wine. Barbecue sauce space is vinegar and sugar. Both things kill wine. Vinegar strips the fruit out and sugar covers up the fruit in wine flavor. So both of them make wine seem dull and not as lively as they can be. Zinfandel, because of the high amount of fruit that it brings to the table, it's 
balanced acidity, looks at the sweet barbecue sauces, relishes, ketchup, all of those things, pickles, anything we put on a hamburger, a hot dog, uh, all those wonderful barbecue sauces we put on ribs, chicken, steaks. Zinfandel looks at these things and says, I'm not afraid of you. And I'll take your sweet sugary sauce and I will bring to you my full fruit flavor and all of the life I have in the glass and we will find harmony. So Zinfandel is a wonderful pairing if you are a condiment person. Zinfandel looks at it and it does not get stripped out like some of the other wine styles that are different in profile. Zinfandel comes to the table with so much life, so much flavor that it looks at those and says, we're friends. It's okay. I'm not afraid. So if you are a barbecue sauce fan or condiments, ketchup, relish, mustard, all of the delicious stuff, then Zinfandel is definitely a wine you're going to want to have. Same if you're doing pulled pork, for example, and all those delicious flavors. Ribs, whether they're cooked in the oven or cooked on the barbecue. If you're having a stew, you can definitely go here too, more of the sweeter side. So anything you put a little bit of sugar and wine in or a little bit of vinegar that you're cooking with, Zinfandel is an option for you. Because Zinfandel is low tannin, it's also a red that is an option in regards to chicken. So if you want a red wine and you're having chicken, whether it's grilled or in the oven, Zinfandel is an option for you here. Because without the strong tannins, the, the issue we have with red wines and chicken is there's no marbling, there's no fat in chicken. And the tannins go to protein and they make it seem drier because they take all the moisture out. And so when we have lower tannin red wines like we do in Zinfandel, the chicken's not gonna seem so dry. And the fruit flavor, think about it almost like a, a berry relish on top of your chicken. If you're having barbecue sauce, it's just going to work right with that barbecue sauce on your chicken. So if you are doing a barbecue where you're having a multitude of different flavors, maybe you're doing some hamburgers, some sausages, some veggie burgers, some portobello mushrooms, some steaks, anything mix mash, so you're having a whole bunch of things for people to choose from, then as a red wine, I will always highly recommend a Zinfandel. Same as if you're having a cedar plank salmon, that smokiness is going to come through and it's going to be divine with a cedar plank salmon because again, the low tannin in that red means that we can pair it with fish because what happens, and you can pair anything you want. Let me just caveat this a little bit by saying, if you love fish with red wine, keep doing you. The reason we predominantly don't do it is because the red wine and the fish, we actually get a chemical reaction between these and you can end up with a bit of a metallic flavor in your mouth that causes the red wine interaction with the iodine in the fish. And so it's not good or bad, it just creates this strange feeling. Some people will say that it's a bit like sucking on a penny with a filling if you've had that experience where it's not horrible, but it's not enjoyable. So that's why we will say don't pair red wine with fish. It's not that we want to make up a whole bunch of like hardcore rules. It's that we've tried these things before and the actual physical enjoyment of it is just not there. And so we are always giving recommendations, but if you love it, keep doing it. But Zinfandel, especially a lighter bodied Zinfandel, is going to be really, really nice with a cedar plank salmon. You'll get that smokiness. Zinfandel will generally be in a barrel, so you'll have a nice vanilla note around it, and it can be a really, really lovely pairing. So something to keep in mind there as well. Now, the other reason I love Zinfandel, so aside from being able to pair with any grilled dishes or anything that you're putting a barbecue sauce on or a sauce that's based in sugar or vinegar, then the other reason is because of the sweetness this berry flavor that comes from Zinfandel, it's going to pair with any type of chocolate dessert that's sort of milk or dark chocolate based. So anything that you have cherries or strawberries or mixed berries, you can definitely do with a Zinfandel. I love one bite brownies with Zinfandel. It's one of my favorite pairings. I also love to take a cookie. So a chocolate cookie, we here in Canada, we have a cookie called Fudgio, which is basically like a a chocolate icing in the middle and two hard biscuits on the outside, kind of like an Oreo, but filled with chocolate. And what happens is I snap that in half and dunk it into my delicious glass of Zinfandel at the end of a meal. And it's delicious. It's so fun. If you are having people over, I highly recommend letting them dunk cookies into wine. And let's face it, it's impossible to have 
any kind of snobbery around dunking cookies into wine and it is really really a fun way to end a meal so cookies and wine takes the whole cookies and milk experience to a whole new level so let's just recap everything we learned about Zinfandel today and why it's on my favorite Great Friday list it is very very versatile anytime I pull out a barbecue sauce Zinfandel is my girl she's definitely right at the top of my mind of how can I have this it's lower in tannin it is delicious with chocolate so milk and dark chocolate desserts but Zinfandel versatile friendly full of rich fruit flavors so I hope today I have inspired you to pick up a bottle of Zinfandel remember it's going to be a little bit sweeter in regards to those ripe fruit flavors and compared to your Melbecks and your Cabernets and even your Merlots but it is so food friendly so give it a chance give it a try if you have questions or comments about today's episode if you're watching on YouTube just leave your comments below and if you're listening on your favorite podcast feel free to reach out to me on social media whether that is Instagram or TikTok or Facebook at Wine Girl Academy I hope I've inspired you to pick up a bottle of Zinfandel this week and give it a try and I hope it will also become one of your favorite grape varieties. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode which come out every Tuesday. I want to wish you a wonderful week. Cheers, everybody. Bye now.